Greetings, friends. This is Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Today's topic, what is evolutionary nutrition and why is it so important? Usually when we look at nutrition, whether we know it or not, we tend to view it as the kind of science where we simply need to get things right. Meaning the assumption is pretty widespread that there must be an ideal diet. And once we determine what that ideal diet is, then we can relax and push the nutritional cruise control button. We have the answers and we don't need to search anymore. Some nutrition experts feel that we simply need to look into our past to what our ancestors ate and find the one true diet from there. Other experts believe that we simply need more scientific sophistication to alter the genetic structure of our food and perhaps even alter the DNA of the body. And with this genetic wisdom, we will somehow create nutritionally optimal human beings. But what most approaches to the field of nutrition tend to miss is one all important concept. We are still evolving as a human species. We're still evolving as a planet. We're still evolving metabolically. Furthermore, we're still evolving culturally and spiritually and more. Evolutionary nutrition alerts us to this simple and all important fact. We're still evolving. It would be easy to assume that human beings as we are right now, we're at the flowering of our biological evolution. We've made it. We've reached the top of the food chain. But what I would like to suggest to you is that nothing could be further from the truth. So if we truly want to create a healthier nutritional present and a brighter nutritional future, we need to reimagine how we see things. So yes, we need to look to our nutritional past to get important insights into how we can practice the art of healthy eating today. This is extremely important and is one of the key driving forces in the field of nutrition. But we have to put ourselves in the context of being an evolving species. In fact, it can be argued that from a genetic standpoint, we're changing pretty rapidly. The field of epigenetics is clearly showing us that gene expression can change in a moment's notice in response to foods, nutrients, herbs, thoughts, feelings, environmental toxins, and so much more. So many people get confused in response to all the nutritional systems and all the differing opinions that are out there. But essentially what you're seeing is nutritional evolution in action. Meaning every nutritional expert, scientist, and clinician who's touting a new way of eating is participating in the beautiful experiment called self-evolution. We can literally use our mind and our intention and our intellect to invent ways to help the body adapt to an ever-changing world and an ever-changing environment. How great is that? Creatures and organisms evolve when they try new strategies. Sometimes life forms are forced into adapting into new challenges. The climate might change. An ice age might happen. A meteor strike might change the face of the planet. Other organisms are getting bigger and stronger around us and we need to find better ways to protect ourselves. We humans have the amazing opportunity to fuel our metabolic evolution. So, when we first started producing junk food, this was literally an evolutionary experiment. And it kind of goes like this. Let's eat mass-produced food that's low in nutrition, high in sugar, intensely processed, stripped of nutrients with all sorts of chemicals that don't exist in nature for added color and flavor. Let's eat all that for a bunch of decades and see what happens. It's an experiment in evolution. And by the way, I want you to consider that this is a failed evolutionary experiment. It's a good try. It made a little sense. Quick and easy food, mass produced at a nice big profit, sold cheaply, easy to purchase. Who could argue with that? Well, the body has argued with it and it's essentially said no. You know, if you've adopted a vegetarian or vegan diet, then you're participating in an evolutionary experiment as well. 
Congratulations! According to the battlefield of cultural anthropology, there's maybe one culture that we've identified, a tiny subgroup in India, where we can say with any certainty has been on a long-term vegetarian diet for generations. There's virtually a 100% chance that your ancestors, going back for many generations, have been eating animal foods. So when you adopt a diet without animal foods, it's a beautiful evolutionary experiment. Let's try this and see if it works. By the same token, most of the new supplements that appear in your health food store are relatively new to the food chain, especially in the forms that we purchase them in. Consuming superfoods from all over the globe is yet another fascinating experiment in nutritional evolution. Another example, those who adopt the paleo diet are participating in the fascinating genetic experiment called let's eat what we believe our ancestors ate, let's change up what we've been doing for the last few generations and see what happens to the body. Many people have some pretty amazing results. For others, such an experiment is only short-lived. My point is this, let go as best you can of what you think is right or wrong when it comes to food and diet and nutrition. Embrace change. Embrace the need to experiment. Celebrate all those experiments that look like they're going well. Criticize the ones that clearly are not working. Talking about GMOs and the majority of overprocessed foods, over-sugared foodstuffs that occupy virtually every inch of every shelf of every supermarket. The beauty of evolutionary nutrition is that your life now becomes an ongoing experiment. So try things. Try fasting. Try cleansing programs. Eat locally grown. Eat organic. Use herbs. Take immune-enhancing substances to protect yourself against a hostile environment. And consider each one of these a reasonable and intelligent experiment in your own metabolic evolution. So I hope you can get a sense of how empowering this can be, how interesting it is, and how it takes us out of the conversation of finding the perfect diet and arguing with each other about what's nutritionally right or wrong. And I hope you can see that it places us in the laboratory of life where anything's possible, my friends. I hope this was helpful, my friends. To learn more, go to psychologyofeating.com. The Institute for the Psychology of Eating offers the most innovative and inspiring professional trainings, public programs, conferences, online events, and much more. Through our Eating Psychology Coach Certification Training, you can grow a new career and help your clients break through the most compelling eating challenges of our times. If you're focused on your own eating and health, the Institute offers a great selection of one-of-a-kind opportunities to take a big leap forward in your relationship with food. We are proud to be international leaders in online and live educational events that are designed to create the breakthroughs you want most. Our professional and public programs are powerful, results-oriented, and embrace all of who we are as eaters. I'm talking body, mind, heart, and soul. For questions, you can always email us at info at psychologyofeating.com. We'll be sure to get back to you real soon. This is Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Thank you so much for your time and interest.